Now I see the three dots. I see. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't get the sorry one. So I would put in the other one, go on another computer or something, and put it there. That is like is the different link than the other one, obviously. Okay. Yep. Well, yeah, but a lot of people are logging into this one. See you. <laughs> you too. All right, I'm, I'm going to shut up my phone because we're here. Okay. We can talk here. <laughs> it says we got 25 participants in here. I got it. Um, yes, yeah, so you need to go in and, and Turn on the people who are um, who are uh, on the panel. I don't see anybody else on there right now. Let me just go over to Robert and let him know to log into the other Zoom. Okay, go ahead. Only put a new one. over here. Hey everybody! So uh, just so you know, we're we're going to be a couple of minutes behind here because we have uh, we changed this up to be able to do it so we can get everybody into this uh, event because we're getting a lot of people in this every week, and uh, so this is a different program. And uh, I'm not we're not seeing um, yeah. So she's going to the other computer to tell the people in the other Zoom event, which is our regular Zoom event to move over to this as an event. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know if it does or not. The challenge with challenges and changes, right? But we'll get there. So how's everybody doing? Pretty good, thanks. Excellent. I like that. It's great to see everybody on here. We're going to get going shortly again. I'm just waiting for uh, we have a little technical things because we switched things, but I see a ton of people here. There's Bobby. So, um, once we get everybody over here, we'll we'll get rolling in a few minutes. And uh, TJ over there, hey TJ and Stephanie and Shay and Karen, and just lots of people. What's up, Cameron? We'll get you over here in a second, man. We're just uh, figuring this new one out. Bobby, we'll get you switched over in a second, but. Yeah, it's great, Janet. Love seeing all these people on this thing. That's our goal every week is just keep inviting more and more people to here so we can keep getting them. Uh, you know, get as many people on this so we can help as many people as possible. And uh, yeah, so we'll get there. Yeah, Cameron, we uh, we sent it out to everybody. It doesn't look like everybody saw that we sent it out to everybody that we switched, but um, we'll, uh, we'll get this. Just give me a few more minutes here. We're just going to be a couple minutes behind. Because that's how we roll, just figure it out, right? Yep, not everything goes smooth when you change things.
So for, you, for those of you who don't know, I'll just keep talking while we're in. So basically, uh, you know, Pete and myself, uh, Pete Middleton and myself, uh, you know, came up with this a few, I don't know, a couple months ago and brought in, you know, obviously rock stars like uh, Matt Badiati and, and Bobby Martin and uh, Cameron Smith and uh, Randy, I can never pronounce his last name, uh, and a few others that are on the calls with us every week. And so we'll get them over here shortly because we're on the other one. And um, the goal of this is really just to help you grow your business. I mean, that's all we want to do here is help you grow and turn, uh, give you ideas on growing your business last week. And all these are recorded, by the way, in our EXP Tribe uh, workplace group. Uh, so for those of you that are in our organization, those are, these are all recorded for you. Uh, if you're not in our organization or not with EXP, feel free to reach out to me. And I'm glad to get you the recording uh, of the event last week we did. Um, last week we did listings and how to get listings and, and how to, so how to get the listing appointments and how to get listings on top of that. So we're going to actually do that again this week because last week was, we just never got finished. There was so much going on. All right, there's Dre. So, uh, so Dre, so you, know, you have to make panelists to our peeps there, no. Matt and uh, Cameron and Bobby and Whoever else is on there, I can't see. Uh, Craig Lurch is there. Get Craig over there. Uh, Cameron Smith, he needs to come over. There you go. And Craig Lurch. Who, who am I missing on here? Thanks, Bobby, for putting that up there. Um, are we missing any of our other guys on there? Dennis is going to pop on. He just logged into the other Zoom link. So yeah. I posted the new Zoom link in that chat box on the other Zoom, and everybody's hopping in now. So once he has okay. I'll, I'll, uh... Hey, Drake, can you put that link in this chat so I can so we can send it to somebody who may be locked out? Oh, here it is. Bobby, over. No. Can you put that Zoom link back in this chat? In this chat? Absolutely. Yeah, so we Thanks. can do it over. So we can send it out. I want to send it to that that lady. Um, okay, yeah. Actually, she's on here. Um, I saw her on here. If she uh, right Craig and, uh, and and Dre, could you send uh, Dennis's te text me? Can you send the uh, link to Dennis too? What's up, Bobby? You gotta love this stuff, right? I'm <laughs> uh, just laughing at my my uh, partner over here. He had a, a pretty funny note. I'll I have to do a wire transfer today, and I look and he wrote this note for me. And it says, do your wire, but I looked at it and it, it looked like it said, do your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's not very well, nice. Hopefully I get to do that too. <laughs> I got to do a wire and a wife today. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. You welcome, um, guys. Yeah. Anyway, so let's go ahead and, um, uh, Jason, you know how to get this live now? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so so Mitch, uh, so last week we did a real deep dive on kind of the, like where to find listings, um, how to get them, listing appointment. We never really got to the leveraging of that of the listing. Um, so I hope all of us could share some real good uh, tips to leverage that listing more to get more deals. That's really what it's all about. Every listing should get at least two more transactions between referrals and uh, and or marketing. And so, um, so I think that's that's somewhere where a lot of people could really use help, in my opinion, because uh, I see a lot of agents will get, you know, they'll sell five listings, but then they have no buyer transactions from those listings, and that's that's a shame because uh, you, know, you should get that's, that's the um, I mean, that's the key, right? I mean, the the key is you know, you're building a business, and you're building a business. You say, all right, how do I have uh, I have one product here, my listing? How do I maximize my revenue now on that listing? And uh, you know, we'll we'll go. To, you know, I'll I'll talk last on how I do things and and stuff. But um, let's let's go. Like, uh, let's start with Cameron because Cameron's always Cameron's always got some really cool ideas, and he's he's like twelve years old. So I really appreciate that because um, I'm uh, old enough to be his grandfather. Um, but anyway, so Cameron, so you get a listing. Tell us what you do with that listing to um, to actually maximize your value on that. Right. So new listing. First thing we obviously do would be the, the open house on the first weekend. 
Um, traditionally with listings that go longer than 24 hours or 48 hours, we can do a little bit more with them. But right now our listings sell as fast as they come on the market or faster. Um, we still do the open houses on the first weekend, even if we have contracts already on it, just because it drives so many people in that we can show other properties too. Um, I'm really excited today because I, I have a trouble not getting buyers from my listings, but getting other listings surrounding. And every time my listing sells, a few others pop up, but I just am not, um, you know, I haven't perfected the technique on what you guys are doing to kind of circle prospects. So I'm excited to see what you guys are doing today. Um, you know, for buyers, the open house, making sure all the neighbors come over and see what you're doing. Um, and then obviously getting those people into your CRM and following up with them. Um, new leads that come in through an open house or any kind of lead source, if you guys are not following up with them, making contact with them, uh, sending them properties that match what they're looking for, you're, you're kind of wasting time. So um, I want to pass this off to you guys because I'm excited for today's topic. Okay. Right. Um... Bob, you want to go ahead and dive in? All right. So, yeah, happy to dive in here. So I've got a few notes, uh, and uh, Tyler's taking notes on everything, and we'll share this uh, towards the end. Um, so, you know, first off, I think the, the first thing that you have to do is set the expectations with the seller on what you're doing, because... So, much, so often a seller, they say, okay, I'm ready to list my house. And then they immediately want it on the market and they want everything done within four days. And, you know, that's not realistic. You got to get your, uh, you got, you got to get your expectations right with the seller and you got to explain to them, look, I'm going to get all the pictures, all the videos, going to get everything compiled. And then we're going to put it on the market as a coming soon. We're going to take our time. I prefer five to seven days of marketing my listings before a single foot walks in that door, okay? And so what we're doing is we're listing on Friday. We, we um, uh, go coming soon on Monday. We do uh, uh, first showings on Friday and then those end on Monday. And so we get four days of, of showings. We've got at least two open houses. Friday open houses are actually pretty strong now. In the past, you know, you had to wait for that Sunday paper get the list of open houses, but now you got Redfin, you got Zillow, you got all these people that are advertising your listing. So Thursday afternoon, Friday afternoon, those are great days for open houses. And so um, so I think that's the first thing, dude, you got to get the, the seller on board with waiting. Uh, this is, I always tell them, I say, look, this is not a race that we're talking about your equity here. And any agent can come in, throw a sign up and have it sold in one day that's going to leave money on the table. And that's not what I'm about. I want to make sure you maximize on the sale. So when I'm coming in, I'm totally different than anybody else that they're talking to. The other people are like, I've got a buyer. I could sell in one day, all that kind of shit. That is not in the best interest of the seller. And so I'm, I'm actually prepping sellers for agents like them. So I tell them, I say, if you come across somebody that is like this, you got to be careful because they're not looking out for your top dollar. And so I'm going to make sure the entire process gets done correctly. And, uh, and then what that does is that gives me the time, obviously, to let that property sit on the market for 11 days. So you got sign calls, internet calls. We're doing home snap ads. We're doing, I've got my, uh, my, my, uh, 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 my internet guy, uh, my digital marker there. That's what I was looking for. I've got him doing ads on every single listing and we're getting anywhere from 80 to 100 um, click-throughs to our, our uh, site on that um, and, uh, and getting their information. But obviously, you got to have the people. So you're, you need a team to go after that. And that's one thing that a lot of agents, they miss out on is they don't have a team member to help them. They, so if you are a listing agent getting three, four, five listings a year, you should have a, a partner that you can help leverage those listings because that's going to be the difference maker. Just came up with this idea recently and haven't done it yet, but this one is a good one. So you might want to write this down. There's a bunch of programs out there that you can trade in your home, right? So why not put together a postcard or a flyer, get that listing. As soon as you get the listing, you, you have a door drop around, in, in around the neighborhood or you do postcards mailed or you just knock on the door old fashioned way, hand off the flyer, 
and you tell them about the trade-in option on the flyer. So you say to them, how would you like to trade your home for the one across the street with the view? You know, so especially those people that don't have a view that are, you know, that, um, you know, they, they've always looked at that house, you know, at the end of the cul-de-sac with the view and wanted to buy that, you're going to have people say, what is this trading option about? And then that's a seller lead and a buyer lead for you. So uh, definitely a smart thing to do. Again, I haven't done it yet. Um, it's something I just kind of came up with uh, recently. And let's see. So we talked about the Facebook ads. Circle prospecting works extremely effective only if you do the just listed in escrow and just sold to the same people because then they're hearing your voice multiple times. You see the property go into pending pretty quickly, throw the sold sign up there. They're going to give you a call back, hopefully. So um, now once you're in escrow, it is absolutely critical to start asking for those referrals immediately. And we hear this all the time. I guarantee you, your team members are not asking for that referral. So if your team members aren't doing it, you should do it as a team leader. Call your clients up. Hey, congratulations. You're an escrow. How's the service been? How's Trisha been treating you? Are you happy with everything? Yes, you are. Oh, fantastic. How about this? Can do you know anybody looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? Who else can we help? Okay, so if you're doing that with every single escrow that your team does as a team leader, I guarantee you're going to get more referrals. And here's the kicker. The person that didn't ask, next time they're going to ask because you got them a referral. And they're also going to appreciate the value you're bringing as a team leader because that's the name of the game. If we're not bringing value as team leaders, then why should our team lead, uh, follow us, right? So um, I'm constantly trying to help my team get into escrow. And I'm super stoked. We have a, a, our new guy, Roman. Uh, he might be on the call here as well. This guy has been on our team for three weeks and he's been here every morning, nine o'clock. I, I, I handed him a good lead uh, that I just converted. I said, you go out there, show him houses. He took the lead. We got him into escrow last night. So as, as team leaders, that's how we can really leverage ourselves because we don't have time to go out there and show the houses that our team does. And we just got to help them win as much as possible. So that's about it I got, got so far. I mean, I, I think that it's important to focus on the right things. And that's the last thing I'll say, because a lot of times agents are, are focused on the wrong, wrong things when it comes to these listings. And enlist somebody from your team to help you. We've been recently doing a 90-10 split. So I've been bringing in agents who have zero, nothing to do with the deal, but a quality agent on our team and they live in the area of where the listing is. And so I've been giving them 10% of that deal and having them help me manage it. So it's taking some, some uh, tasks off my plate and then it also gives them the leads on that property. So again, you know, getting some, some partnership and ownership uh, and help from somebody else because we try to put so much on our back all the time. We wanna be the one doing it all. And, you know, but really, I mean, if you could leverage through five, six, seven, 10, 15 people, just think about how much you can do. So, all right, that is it. So just a uh, great job, Bobby. Uh, you always bring it, you always bring fire to the table. I love it. Um, just so everybody knows, because I'm getting lots of comments and things, we set up a different format this week. Um, we're, we're only the people that are on the panel are actually shown in the group here. Uh, we've got 80 people on this call right now. It, it wasn't feasible to do it any other way. Plus, we're also st streaming this live to workplace. And the only way to stream this live to workplace was in a different format. So uh, we know you're all there. We see you all there. And when we open it up for questions, we'll do it through the chat box. Um, but that's why it looks differently than it normally looks for you guys. So um, we're all still here doing what we do. Uh, Mr. Lurch, Mr. Craig Lurch, one of my favorite people up in the cold tundra of Pennsylvania. Um, what do you got, bud? One of the things that we've been doing is going back to the second we get that listing, they're in the mindset of how it's, it's like the white car theory. If you're thinking about selling or you just bought a white car, you see more white cars on the street. And we tell them, look, you're going to be running into a lot of people as you're getting ready to get your house for sale. A lot of people are going to be giving you advice because they're also looking for advice. Could you do me a favor and get me in touch with them? So that's the biggest key. We're not asking our seller 
when we list the house for more business. We're asking it for it after we've gone, after we've gone to escrow. Mm -hmm. So we've changed that. We've actually gone to, when they've hired us, we actually say, okay, now other people like yourself, who do you think we can help? So we're hitting it sooner than later, creating more transactions. Also, we've asked them, would you repost and let us get into your sphere of influence when we give you the marketing pieces? Why is going to pull their, their sphere of influence on our social media to us? So as we're posting, we're asking them to repost and to include us and tag us so it comes back to us. So we're picking up followers. We're also being seen by a different world that isn't our world that we can't get to. And it seems to be going full circle that people are saying, oh, they're working with so-and-so. I guess it's good. They can get to me. But they don't know. They may not have seen them. They didn't know what was going on. So where, Bobby, you were saying is going for the area of the people around it, we're also going for the area of the people on their social media. Because then once we latch in on them, they're in our book then. We can't leave them. Once these people move, these people in the neighborhood, we can lose. But once they're in our following, they can see what's going on. They may not be ready to move now, but they might be in the, in the future. Because people in the average time are going to stay in their house. What we've been finding is 10 years. So if you have 100 people, you're going to have 10 people in your database that are going to be moving. you got to find out who they are. So that's what we've been doing with that. I think that answered the question. Yeah, it's great. Great. Um, yeah, you always have that. Craig and I had a great call this morning with with uh, a wonderful uh, woman thinking about joining us. But uh, uh, I always love talking to Craig because he's got that northern gruff, which is awesome. Uh, <laughs> Mister Mister Massa, the the, uh, the the king of Cabo. Um, so uh, what, tell us what you're doing, bud. Uh, how am I doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you I'm doing? I'm <laughs> good. What are you doing with your listings to generate more sales? Yeah, so uh, in, in great question. So again, I, I, I really like what everybody's talking about here. Craig, definitely a good point to start ahead of the game, trying to ask for referrals. We've been working on trying to make sure that we have the systematic points throughout the like touch points with the sellers throughout the process. Uh, again, we're in the process right now of making sure everything is checklisted and systemized from start to, to end. But again, those little like experience points like, hey, your home's in escrow. Here's a bottle of champagne. Put it on ice, right? Um, just different things where we're in, we're really increasing the experience that they're having, but giving them talking points to uh, to be able to tell their friends and people when they're trying to refer us, be able to tell a story, right? And when we, you know, something different that people haven't said yet is, you know, we're really on a push to getting video testimonials and or just testimonials at the end, right? And so we're asking like once we go under contract and we're probably like in that honeymoon, we're about to close phase usually about seven or 10 days before the close of escrow, we're asking a number of different times that they can uh, do the testimonial, video testimonial, et cetera. But we're asking them to tell the story, right? We're asking, what was your experience? How did we solve a problem? It's not always perfect. So, we're, so we can avoid the, you know, Gary and his team were great. You know, we want the, hey, it was challenging because X, Y, Z, here is our story. Here's how they overcame it, et cetera. And we're setting up those stages along the, you know, along with the, the little nice touch points that's, you know, showing them the white glove service. Like when you're going to the fancy hotel, the Ritz Carlton, they have all these touch points from when you check in through the rest of the process that make it memorable and, and make it to where they can tell the story. Hey, you know what? I sold a house a while ago with such and such agent. It was fine, but this was extraordinary because here's why. And when they start coming across the challenges that their friends are having, they can say, oh, you know what? Here's how my agent resolved this. Maybe you need to work with them as well. So just creating those stories and, and helping them understand how to refer us, not just asking for a referral or connecting us with the clients. That is what I found, you know, in the last year or so has really started to increase our, uh, our referral and story sharing. Yeah, awesome. Awesome stuff. Now, I love this because, you know, everybody's got, you know, we all do the same stuff, but we all have different angles and how we accomplish our goals. Um, but they all work. Mr. Batty, are you there, bud? Yep, I'm here. Right, so what, what are you doing to maximize your listings, uh, get more business? So, gosh, it's hard to follow these guys because this is all great information. But I'm going to kind of, you know, one thing that I still do that I've always done the, with the agents that we train, I always tell them how important it is to set up a marketing plan that runs on autopilot because what I see happens and what's happened with me and my business in the past is you do some marketing, you get busy, 
and then you're just too busy to create new marketing, right? And so you look back and you go, ah, oh, man, I haven't sent out any, you know, what, whatever the marketing you're doing. So I create a marketing plan at, at the beginning of the year. And part of it is with listings especially in any market, but especially in a market like we're all in right now, the minute uh, a listing comes up, it's automatically happens. We send out it, a just listed postcard goes out and a post goes out on Facebook and Instagram saying, look, we just listed this property. The same thing happens when it goes into escrow, right? In escrow with multiple offers as a mailer uh, and you know Facebook, Instagram and so forth post. And then the same thing uh, when it sells. So, I mean, all the things that you guys have mentioned, circle prospecting and all that stuff is great. But the nice thing about having this all set up for your for your business is you don't even have to think about it. You don't have to proof any postcards. It just happens automatically. Um, and then I love what you guys mentioned about asking for referrals. Um, we just ask for referrals constantly and you kind of have to kind of jog people's mind, but um, especially in a market where listings are at such a premium. Um, the other thing that I'm really promoting as far as getting new listings, I know we talked about this last week, is you know the fact that we can sell your home literally in one day. So with all my clients, because I know that's appealing to a seller, where I you know the pitch is basically, look, we'll market your house for a week, week and a half without any showings. We'll funnel all the showings literally into one Saturday. If we can't get everything done on Saturday, maybe we'll do a Sunday, and then we'll respond to offers on Monday. So that's really appealing to people because regardless of whether we're in a pandemic or not, if people can literally sell their house in one day of showing showings, that's really, really attractive. And then I also, part of the pitch is that we will, we will create a bidding war and bid up the price of your home. So. And you also do, Matt, you do a great job um, of, of, of positioning the seller so they can stay in the house also for a longer period of time. Right. Talk, talk about that for a second. Yeah. So we, uh, that's the other thing that I found is a lot of people don't know where to go. And so we, I came up with this thing and I'm sure I'm not, I didn't invent it, but it's sell and stay so that you can sell your home and then you can stay there. You know, we can negotiate for you to stay there as long as you want. And so, um, you know, it's all negotiable of course, but yeah, that's another one, sell and stay. And that's people find that very appealing too, because they want to sell, they want to capitalize on the market, but they don't know where to go. Um, and so this gives them a little breathing room. I say, look, we can do, we could do a 60 day escrow and we can, we can have you stay in the house for, you know, a couple 59 days after close, that's going to give you four months of time. I mean, you know, well, there's a lot of different ways we can skin it. Right. Um, so yeah, I find that's, that is very appealing for people that don't quite know where they're going or this time of year, people are, a lot of people are saying, well, yeah, we're moving, but we're not moving until school's out. So that's how you can get listings now, as opposed to them saying, well, I want to wait until May to put my house on the market, right? Right. Yeah, there's also a program out there called knock.com. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's a pretty amazing program where they'll actually buy the house you want to buy for cash. And then they'll let you put your house on the market and they give you six months to sell your house at that point. Oh, wow. So that's K-N-O-C-K, -K, knock, like knock on the door. Mm -hmm. um, great program. I've had a couple of customers use it so far. They love it. Uh, I'm going to touch on a couple of points real quick um, on what we do. Uh, first thing we do, we list, we used to list all our homes on, on Thursday, but now we list them on Friday. So we do the coming soon generally for about 14 days to get, get up the, the um, excitement, of course. We list the house on Fridays. We do not accept offers until noon on, on Monday. We'll accept offers. We want highest and best by noon on Monday. And we use Saturday and Sunday for open houses. And we have generally have two shifts of open houses. Um, two, you know, agents for two different blocks in each day. So we have four agents uh, getting in there. So it gives you opportunity to get more listings, uh, which has worked really, really well. Uh, not more listings, more buyers for you. Uh, the other thing that that is great is when you're doing, um, when you're doing the, uh, when you get a listing, and I don't know how many people of you guys are doing this, but I love this. You get a listing and, you know, a lot of agents will go, here's my card. And if you know anybody looking to buy or sell in the neighborhood, you know, hit, give them my card or if they know friends, you know, if you want to get, especially if you want to get the higher end listings, you know, get, do really, really nice eight page color brochures and then give your customer 20, 30 of those brochures and say, here, give these to your neighbors because they probably know someone might be looking, wanting to move into the area. 
And when they're giving them these beautiful brochures, they're saying, hey, my, my last agent just gave me a, a stack of business cards. It sets you as uh, apart dramatically yeah. uh, from being a hot, to being a high-end uh, lister versus just a regular lister. And you can do that on, on any type of property, but the high-end properties, it works better. Uh, Bobby, you have a, a, a guest here you would like to introduce? Mm -hmm. All right, yes. Uh, first off, real quick, Matt Badiato, um, who do you use for your mailing service? What's the company that, that you like for the postcards? Yeah, I use a, uh, I think they're called Real Estate Marketing of California. You know, I'm talking about REM. Um, I can put their contact if I can dig it up, but it's, I think it's, I think their website is my REM plan, maybe. Let me double check. But they're, right, the awesome. ones, they're the ones that I do. I've shown these before. I can show you guys real quick. Yeah, I think a few weeks ago, I think you might have mentioned that before. Yeah. Uh, but of course, I didn't take action at that time. And that's the big thing. A lot of times we hear things that are that yeah. sound great. And these, just don't take action these, these four pagers for me. Okay. Nice. Those are great. Yeah. How much do those uh, cost you, Matt? Um, I have these. You can do a deal where you basically, these are buck a pop. Okay. Awesome. And I think, great. yeah, I'm pretty sure that includes postage, believe it or not. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, my friend. So I want to bring in the Ron Burgundy of real estate. Uh, all you got to do is look at the panel here and you're going to figure out which one I'm talking about. Mr. Ulysses Vega is in the Fontana market. This guy is such a stud. I've, I've been uh, following him for a while on, on, on Instagram, on Facebook, and uh, we've become friends. Uh, Cameron actually was the one who introduced this a while back. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, so, but uh, yeah, I really love this guy. He, you know, he, uh, there's certain people in the business when you watch them, you know, you get to see their integrity. And this guy gives a lot to the industry. He tra he's training a lot of agents and helping people better themselves, you know. To, uh, you know so, uh, so, Mr. Vega, you go ahead wow. and take the floor, share, share some things with us <laughs> that, uh, that you're doing. I know that you uh, you leverage this stuff. In fact, in, uh, quick story before I hand it off to you. I'm on, I'm on Facebook this morning, and there you are. You're you're walking the neighborhood with your team. And that to me was like, man, you know, like I, I felt bad for myself. I was like, I haven't knocked on a door in years, and I sit here, I tell my team to go do it, and you know, that's leading by example. So kudos to you, my well, friend. I I appreciate you, Bobby. First and foremost, uh, I'm super excited to be here, super humble. I don't think, I honestly don't think I belong in this panel, but uh, somehow I managed to squeeze my, myself in. So I'm going to keep going before somebody disconnects me. So thank you all for, for tuning in. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I do to leverage my listings is obviously video. Um, video is huge, but um, in order to feel comfortable using video, I think it's important that we are comfortable with how we look, how we sound. Um, I always have a bad hair day. I have an accent. I, I embrace it. I embrace the fact that I look different, sound different. I'm not six foot two, I'm only five eight. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna attract the right environment. So with that being said, every time we get a listing, one of the first things that I like to do is outside of the house, I like to do a Facebook Live. I like to do a Facebook Live and literally tell everybody, hi everyone, this is Ulises, broker owner with the Vega team. Um, my team and I just listed this beautiful home behind me and it's coming soon, you know, in 10 days, it's listed at this. Who do you know that's looking to move into this beautiful neighborhood? Who do you know that's looking to build generational wealth? If you know anybody that's tired of paying somebody else's mortgage, send me a DM. Uh, and that's just immediately after I leave the house or the property. So that's the first thing that I do. And obviously we do the professional videos, professional photography. Um, we also do door knocking. And one of the things that I believe um, one of the gentlemen before me mentioned about uh, circle prospecting, the just listed postcards, the door knocking the neighborhood. I actually have team members um, that actually do door knock. And they say, hey, you know what? My team and I just listed this beautiful home. It's your neighbor's house. We believe that we priced it right. And uh, you have the opportunity to pick your own neighbor. So who do you know that you would like to have live two houses from you? And they always say, you know what, my brother or my cousin, or you know what, 
you know, and, and another thing that I do is I don't, I don't, I don't pass out business cards anymore. I have a video business card. So whenever I meet somebody, for example, let's say I meet Cameron, which is always amazing to see him because he's so full of energy. And I, I, I want to be like Cameron and Bobby when I grow up seriously. Um, but one of the things that I do is I, I connect with somebody and I tell them, Hey, you know, if I meet Cameron at a Starbucks and I say, Hey, you know what? I'm going to have you enjoy your Starbucks, but why don't we connect tomorrow? What is your phone number? I would love to text you something that I feel is going to be valuable. And immediately I get their phone number. And then I text them a 40 second video that says, if you're watching this video, most likely you're looking to buy or sell real estate. Hi, my name is Ulysses, blah, blah, blah. And now I have their phone number. Another thing that I send them is a link to my, my series of videos that I've recorded explaining the process of buying a home, you know, from getting pre-approved, what's a DU, you know, the, the difference between pre-qualified and pre-approved, you know, searching for houses before looking, uh, you know, before getting approved, uh, how the market is, educating. I'm all about educating the consumer, but again, leveraging video, leveraging your teammates. It, it took me 11 years to delegate. And I wish I would have known this sooner. So now I delegate 95% of whatever's on my plate. Um, I check my activities as often as I check my phone. What do I mean by that? If I see that I'm not doing something that's going to generate a buyer or seller today, I leave it alone or I leverage it. I delegate it. So again, leverage through delegation. Uh, it's important that we trust those around us. Because we often feel, well, who's going to do it better than me? Well, if I have somebody show property that's going to do it at 70, 80%, that's good enough for me. I cannot be in 20 places at the same time. But if I have 30 plus agents showing 30 houses in one day, that could be potentially 30 escrows. There's no way that I could have opened 30 escrows by myself in one day. So that's, a, that's my, little, um, my little golden nugget. You hit it on the head, my friend. Uh, are you doing much on uh, Instagram? I see you on there sometimes. Yes. I'm not on. I'm not on on Instagram. Are you doing reels? Um, I'm doing stories. I'm doing reels. Okay. Yes, Instagram. Okay. I also have a YouTube channel which I try to upload everything. I try to put something on Twitter as well. Uh, okay. Recently started getting into TikTok. I haven't done the whole, you know, what my 14 year old would do with the hands. I haven't done that yet. I think I would look pretty silly for my age. Um, what but is then again, your number one source for getting listings? What, what would you say your number one source is? I would say past clients and my SOI, but it's but it's through it's through social media. So absolutely, I would encourage everybody to embrace social media and uh, just go all out. Got it. Is there so is there such a thing as posting too much? Uh, honestly, no, because I would rather you delete me because you see me 24 seven than for you to go somewhere else and list with somebody else because you didn't see me enough. So yeah. at least you know that if right. you see me on my social media, you're gonna be like, damn, there's that broker again, man. He's already <laughs> door, knock, door knocking again. Yeah, but at least you know what I do. So I'm okay right. with that. That's true. And and uh, the one <laughs> thing I would say on that to, uh, to most of you is, is be careful not to post too much about, uh, about work and Correct. nothing about, personal people Correct. want to see your personal stuff on your personal page and uh, a, a social media expert once told me seven to one ratio so you know you're, you got your kids you got all that stuff going yes. and then you're throwing in those powerful pieces uh you know every seventh post or so uh and you know sometimes you might do three or four in a row uh and then that's when you you know people really get to know like okay he's in real estate but it, and, and be careful not to boost much you know that's one thing i see a yeah. lot of people they're boasting oh i did this and i did that and it's like always come be be humble thank your clients that's who that's, that's the, the purpose of the post should be about them and what you did for them and how you changed their lives not so much like hey check me out on this on that or I'm look this. how much money i made or whatever exactly. and one thing one, one last thing that i almost forgot is um testimonial videos they're huge i do them but I let the client know in advance. So for example, hey, Bobby, um, you know, thank you so much for allowing me to list your home. One of the things that I would love to do at the end of the transaction is do a testimonial videos with you and your family. So if you feel that I did a good job, if you feel the experience with me as your broker was pleasant, mm -hmm. if the communication was there, would you mind doing a, a, a video testimonial of no more than two minutes? I'm just gonna ask you three to four questions. 
We'll go live. Don't worry about how we look. You could be in, mm -hmm. in jeans. You could be in sweats because a lot of times they feel, oh my God, I have to go to a studio. I have to wear a suit. No, no, no. Just be you. And I'm just going to ask you, how was the experience with me, Bobby? Great, fantastic, whatever. Number two, how was the communication? Number three, if somebody's watching this video and they're thinking of buying or selling, should they call Ulysses? Yeah. Simple. And, and, and honestly, when you let them know ahead of time, they're like, of course, I'm going to do a testimonial video this Saturday. I did one on Monday and I'm posting them everywhere. I don't share the video because people don't like to open links. I literally yeah. take extra time to upload it on YouTube, upload it on Instagram, upload it on Facebook, Twitter, and now TikTok. I don't share because people don't like to click links because they don't know if it's a virus. They don't know what it is. They want to well, see that, the video right there. That and the platforms will not put the reach out. So last, Correct. I think it was like two weeks ago, I did a post where I, I accidentally, I was a brain fart. I, I did a YouTube link. And, uh, and of course, it barely got any traction. And I'm like, wait a minute, why? Yeah. That, was, that was a good post. That was like, a, you know, something I think a lot of people would have liked. And, you know, lo and behold, like, we didn't get uh, much traction on it because of that. So, and it's happened well, to me in the past. So I've learned from my own mistakes. So, yeah. um, at first, I would record a good video and I'll be like, wait a minute, I only had two views and that, those were my kids. <laughs> and it was because I shared the link. And all yeah. of a sudden, I'm sharing the video. I'm taking a couple of extra minutes uploading it. And next thing you know, 150, 200. Yeah. And this is without boosting. And I was like, wow. And then I get a couple of DMs. Hey, I saw your video. I'm thinking of selling. Can you explain to me what a contingency sale is? So immediately, I send them a video explaining what a contingency sale is. Or I ask them, hey, Bobby, do you have a few minutes to chat this afternoon? No obligation. I would love to explain to you what I do differently. Not better, because mm -hmm. I don't claim that I'm the best broker in the world. I'm just different and people buy from people they like. That's it. That's Absolutely. Fair. Well, it's, uh, it's too bad that you don't have a lot of energy. Uh, I know. Right? I'm sorry. You're a great broker if you had a lot I of haven't, energy. I haven't gotten uh, my copy yet, so I apologize. So, well, <laughs> well, well, it's funny, you, you know, you, you see one thing that's common amongst everybody here. We're all ADDDDD hyper yes. personalities, right? Yes. Um, so I'm Cameron, so hyper, you, I can't even sit down. I gotta stand right. up all the time. Well, I'm old, I'm old, so I have an excuse. Uh, Cameron, uh, you had a question there or you had a comment? Yeah, yeah. So one thing, the Instagram Reels Bobby, um, since January 1st, I have been running a program with a social media company coordinator kind of thing where we have about 500 followers on my Instagram page, but we're getting almost 10,000 views per reel and it's continually growing. That's um, unbelievable. It, yeah, it's really good. So um, I haven't, we haven't completely got it figured out. We're working on it, but this is something that um, we really think is going to become the future because as people's attention spans get shorter and shorter, um, they're going to, you know, gravitate away from YouTube and that kind of stuff. And this swiping, if you, if your kids do it, or, you know, you know, people that do it, they get into this swiping brain thing. And if you can be the one that's in front of them, uh, and you are the one that has the built up account that you've been doing it like Joe Rogan for 300 episodes or 3000 episodes, you know, it just continually grows and grows and grows. So i um, excited to share that with guys with you guys. But the reels are something that um, really look into TikTok reels is great as well. are for Cameron, real. What's the name? <laughs> yeah, the name reels the, are for real. Cameron, what's yeah. the name of the, uh, the company? We had a couple of questions. What's the name of the company you've been using? Uh, we don't have a, it's not a, it's not a formed company. It's just some tech okay. kids that I know, um, that we're, we're, we're working the algorithm. And as soon as we get it figured out, we're going to, it's all going to come out to you guys, but it's just, we haven't got it quite right yet, but okay, it's, cool. it's working. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Craig, Craig, you had something to say? Yeah. I wanted to add some to you listeners, by the way, that is huge information. Thanks for sharing that. Something that I learned from another agent, uh, Bruno and Stacy, uh, Marco it's in Philly here. And I'm starting to do it now. They are huge on thanking the other agents. They are rock stars in what they do. And they're doing it publicly on social media. Example, they'll sell a home. They'll post it saying, hey, this just went under contract. Congratulations to our seller. But I would really like to thank the professionalism of John Smith from Keller Williams. Whatever it may be, they're living their humbleness and being grateful and also living, you know, a true life of freedom of what they want to do. They have they have such a great feel among the agent real estate uh, brokers in the area. I like to call agents and thank them. We talk to them after settlement. We send them book. I send books and things of that nature. But 
that's going one step further. And that's something that I started in, uh, I, my goal was to start in February was going public with thanking my peers and the people that we work with that are professional. So. Great. So I want to throw one thing out there too. That's great stuff, Greg. Um, I, I, I like to do that too. I like to build those relationships with, with people for, for the main reason is, is when I do another deal with somebody and there's multiple offers and they see me, I have an edge up on those people because of the multiple offers, right? So one thing um, that Ulysses stepped on, he, he had to hop off, unfortunately. Um, but what a great guy, Bobby. Good, uh, good intro to the panel. Yeah, he's great. Um, well, and I'll tell you the story behind it because it's kind of funny. Pete and I, actually, it was Dre, we were, we were meeting it. It was a, some club in San Diego. It, we're, we're at some bar and Pete ran into to Dre and now Dre works here. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. And, um, and that's how Dre works here now. But anyway, so we met these, these this group of people. And Pete had just finished and showing me his new business card. I was like, oh, really nice business card. And this guy goes, we met these guys. They owned a security company. There's like 20 of them. And we started talking to them because, of course, you know, people like us talk to everybody, right? And finally, the guy, one of the guys, one of the owners of the security company was in town because he wanted to find a place to live. And um, and he uh, he goes to Pete. He goes, do you have a business card? And Pete goes, uh, no, I don't I actually don't have any cards on me. Can I text you my info? And it was such a brilliant move because now he has his phone number. And it's something, you know, we, we give out thousands of business cards every year. So I actually have stopped giving out business cards. Uh, if you're in an open house, if you're doing an open house, don't get your get the listing on a, on a, on a, on a, a, te a text, text it to them instead of handing them a the piece of paper because now you're getting their phone number. It's just pretty, it was really clever. So uh, Ulysses uh, mentioned that. So I wanted to talk about it because I think that's a phenomenal idea. Bobby, you've been doing that for a long time, huh? I love it. I yeah, love it. Long, long time, especially at open houses. Oh, sorry, we ran out of flyers, but I can go ahead and text you the uh, you know, the the information here, and uh, you know, or the link or whatever. And um, you know, so I, I do the V card. I just send them the V cards. Uh, every client I talk to on the phone, every lead, I send them the V card. I tell them if you forget about my name, punch in realtor into contacts because realtor right. is actually in my actual. Uh, v card and so then I pop up. So that's awesome. I that's been it. effective over the years. I love it. So this has been great. Does anybody else have anything hey, they want to add just, to our this is Robert, what, how right? to maximize your listings? Hey Rob, go ahead. Oh yeah. I just want to go back because last week I think Dennis spoke about open house, open houses, especially in this environment. You know, are we for a while with COVID there was, you know, two people and we take a license at the door or, you know, but Dennis, you had the other philosophy where you kind of let them dabble around and then you caught them, you know, but I just like to hear the input of uh, what people are doing just to, you know, besides texting, you know, to, to gather and make sure the people are real at the open houses and not just agents, you know, under the radar or something. Right, right. Cool. Um, good stuff. Um, so I want to, we got a few more minutes left here. I wanted to open this up to our, our, our guests here. We have 77 of you on the call here. Uh, who has questions for anybody here? Uh, Bobby, someone asked, how'd you make your V card? Uh, it's a V card. All you got to do is go to your phone and simply go to contacts. And you, you go to the very top. Hold on a second here. It says it right there at the very top and then you just click on that and then you've got you can edit it so it's easy write it right on your phone go into contacts and go up to the very very top of the contacts and you can edit everything from there what, what are you doing there gary <laughs> uh, just to add one more thing on that there's actually a better system um there's uh i think it's called dot and they have different things now where you can just like kind of tap you know, the contact info over. There's even, um, I think, a, a card just taps the phone or something. And that, there's, so there's other programs out there. And what's nice about those is you can get all of your links to your social media. I think there's even Linktree. Uh, but yeah, my, uh, my assistant here, he's got this thing here, the little dot card. You know, so it's got the QR code, boom. You know, so there's a lot of that kind of stuff out there in the and the dots on the back of the phone. So, Gary, Gary, yeah, what did I, uh, Gary you have that um, that 
Kai, that you're talking about? Yeah, so so same thing. I was just going to say, like, this basically is like, it feels like a big heavy metal card. Uh, this one, oh my God, I can't, it's a, a Vice One card, basically. So there's a, there's a few different programs out there. The card comes, it's very, you know, heavy, whatever the case, it's got a QR code on the back. But literally you, so when you're out and about, instead of giving business cards, you need to, you just tap this on the top of their phone and like your link tree or your, it's like a small little website where you can have all of your social media stuff. Like Bobby just said, your contact information, social media, but also Ulysses said earlier, like that, that video, right? That video card, you can embed the video in there as well. Hey, I'm Gary. This is what I'm about, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the only problem that I found with this is when you're out and about socializing and networking and whatever the case is like, oh, boom, here's my card. Boom, you tap their phone. They're like, oh, that's great. Cool. They embed it. You guys go your own ways. Typically, like at a, um, a networking event, I go home with all of my business cards. I'm like, oh, I met this person, that person, whatever. And I start texting them through. You forget because, you know, it just goes into your phone. You're busy and whatever the case. So I always ask them, I said, you know what? Well, I'm going to give this to you right now, but you're going to forget. So do me a favor. When it pops up, I have them, you know, I'm sitting there right there with them. Send me a quick text message. And they send me a quick test me text message. And that way there, then I have their, their, their cell phone and I type them back my V car, like, oh, hey, Gary Mossy here's great to meet you, such and such, whatever your name is, and then follow up the next day. But they gave these out at our last, uh, I think in Vegas last or our last conference. This is that popper thing that Cameron was saying. It just glues to the back of your phone, does literally the same thing. So there's a lot of different services out there to where you're not giving business cards interactive and you're giving people more of the information of how to connect with you. That's great. Hey, hey Bobby, uh, I love that stuff, guy. Thanks for sharing, man. Uh, Bobby, um, someone asked, uh, Bobby, if you run the listing, as you said, with offers to be viewed on Monday, which is what I do. do Tuesday um, at 10. Do Tuesday that? at 10 because you know, Monday, that means that agents are working, um, buyer's agents are working up that offer on a Sunday which I think uh, as an industry really sucks. You know, we, we can control our timelines uh, quite a bit as listing agents. And, uh, you know, I, like I, I sometimes I see people, oh, point. we're reviewing offers Sunday at noon. It's like, what right. the hell are you doing? Why are you doing that on a Sunday? You know, get the maximum amount out of your open houses over the weekend. And, you know, the reason why I do four days is because sometimes some buyers can't make it to that one day on Saturday or that one day on Sunday. And so that's why we like to give, you know, uh, the, the whole four days, because, again, this is not a race. This is about getting top dollar for the client. And, uh, you know, and, and then it's also about bringing in more leads, because if you're, you know, you've got three open houses on uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's potentially another 100, 150 leads if it's done right. And so that's how you're really going to leverage and get the you know, two, two or three more pops off of the deal. So, so, so Bobby, so this is perfect add -ness, which is what I love so much about you because you're so much like a younger version of me. Obviously, I had hair back then. Um, so I never got to finish the question. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so the question was, I love this stuff. So the question was, if you're going until Tuesday, and you get an offer the first day, are you telling them you have to wait till Tuesday before you accept it? And what if it's a phenomenal offer? So I, I follow the same pattern and same rule every single time. Out of fairness to all parties, we have to wait until Tuesday at 10 o'clock, review all offers. And here's a big tip on this. If you are an agent, a listing agent that hates those calls, hey, where's your offers at? You know, like, where do I need to be? Like you get, you know, 30 of those calls on a, on a popular listing. You know, um, I just simply state, state, hey, we're not even opening up the offers until Tuesday at 10. So I don't even know where the offers are at. And so you know, the best thing to do is put in a no regret offer to your client. So if they don't get the property, they have no regrets because they wouldn't pay any more for the property anyways. So that's basically what I tell every single agent now. And, and uh, it's really shortened those conversations from five or seven minutes to, you know, 30 to 30 to 60 seconds you know, basically just giving them the info real quick. And, you know, uh, we put all of this in the MLS, but, you know, people still call, they don't read the con confidential remarks, which is a bad idea if you're a buyer's agent. So I, I love that. So thanks for asking the actual question. That's great. Uh, <laughs> so um, uh, I forget who said they mentioned this here, but who uh, who's doing testimonials? And what one of the questions is, what platform are you using for testimonials? Anybody? 
Um, we use we, we use Ring Tree. <laughs> no, yeah, well, no, no. They're asking what, what, where are you trying to get someone to go to so they have all of the uh, Zillow, uh, Yelp, all of that. Is that what you're asking, Mitch? Yes. Okay, we're using Linktree. I know there's some other apps out there that do the same thing. Um, we've just been using Linktree for a long time and it's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E. -E. Uh, and you can put just links with a nice little border around them. Uh, ours says, you know, leave a five-star review at Google, at, at uh, you know, Yelp, at Zillow, at Realtor.com. Um, also, one thing that I have found that really helps getting reviews is having an example of what you want them to say. It doesn't have to be elaborate, but hey, tell, you know, you can tell their story. Or when I send the email to them, usually with the link tree, tree address, um, you know, I, I put some example in there that, you know, you know, he did great at doing this or, hey, remember that problem we solved there or whatever it may be. But giving them some reference really helps get the reviews. Um, and I also ask for reviews before closing. After closing, it's much harder to get reviews. Uh, I usually ask right within, you know, three to five days before closing. Uh, you know, if I did a great job and you guys are happy, you know, leave a review. So, yeah, well, well they still actually like you, right? Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Cameron, do me a favor. Will you put that link in the chat box? And by the way, for the panelists online, if you put things in the chat box, you have to make sure it goes to everyone because a lot of you guys are doing it to hosts and panelists and nobody else sees it except us. Um, uh, any other questions there? We have a few more minutes left here. Anybody, any of the panelists have anything to add? Uh, Bob, you gonna ever put your link in there for the notes? Do you have that? Oh yeah, um, Tyler, can you put the one for um, the same one I did earlier, the business plan? All right, so keep in mind everybody, uh, we, we do this every week. This is our fifth or sixth one we've done. Uh, we are getting ready to post all of the, the um, all of the uh, links into our EXP uh, tribe on, on the EXP workplace group. Uh, so we'll have all the recordings of all the ones we've done. We've done some amazing stuff. Uh, every week it's, you know, we all we all give up our hour every week to come in and help you grow to however you want to grow. And that's what we're all here for. Everybody on this panel here has helped to help you grow your business. Um, any potty words, Bob? Um, I am putting the Google Drive in there right now. And... Uh... So this one is something that you want to save because it is the entire folder for the business playbook. So uh, make sure you, you, you click on this link real quick, guys, and uh, star it so that it shows up in your starred uh, folder. There's uh, shared resources in here. We've got every single uh, uh, note from every single uh, 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 mastermind that we've done. Uh, there's videos on here um, for almost all of them in here as well. So this is something that you can save for the future and use every week. Yeah, awesome. All right, everybody. Anybody else have anything else to say before we go? No? All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you all next week. Uh, I have no idea what our topic will be, but I'm sure it'll be wicked awesome because everything we do is wicked awesome. See all you right. Peace. Be good, everybody. All see right. you guys. Take care, guys. Take care.
Oh, actually, never mind. This is now. Nah, this is the old one. <laughs> <laughs> 